Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, It really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. We are your go-to source. We want to be your go-to source for all things health and nutrition. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, skin health questions, formulation questions, or if you just have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, head to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase all your favorite longevity products off the website, our Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0, Ultimate Nightly Essence, Ultimate Nine and all the longevity products, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team if you so desire to start a business. If you're an entrepreneur, you want to earn thank you checks and make your own hours, work out of your home, or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, we can start you off in business. Call 866-735-2470 for more info, or you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also, would like to remind you to please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Trans, uh, Transdermal Sea Balm, Truth Transdermal Sea Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, silicon, oil, emulsifiers, surfactants, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want ever in any of our Truth Skin Health products, 100% active and functional ingredients and that don't exist nowhere friends 100% active and functional ingredients in all our true skin health products especially fat soluble vitamin C and retinol you could find out about all our truth skin health products at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com all right welcome back to the bright side we're talking about the concept of coherence and heart disease Coherence can be thought of as a smooth, easy interaction between all of the components of the body, the organs of the body, the structures, the tissues, the cells. Everything in the body has a certain vibration and frequency. Really, everything in reality has a certain frequency and vibration. And health itself is a, uh, is a function of smooth, easy vibrations. We call that coherence. And this coherence is a function of electronics, of electromagnetic energy. And the heart, the heartbeat is the master conductor of the electromagnetic energy in the body, and this is the true role of the heart in the body. It's not a pump. Well, it it may slightly be a pump, but that's not its main role. We talked about how it's not really feasible from a fluid dynamic standpoint to expect the heart, which is about the size of your fist, to be able to pump a sticky, viscous fluid like the blood through 60,000 miles of blood vessels, many of which are microscopic and expect the heart to actually go against gravity on the return trip back to the heart. 
The movement of fluid through the heart, like everything else in the body, or the movement of fluid through the body, the movement of, of blood through the body, is an electromagnetic phenomenon like everything else in the body, like everything else in life. It's about electromagnetics. It's not about pumping. It's about electromagnetics. But the, on the other hand, the heart does play a major role in the health of the body in terms of its role as a master conductor of energy. That's its real role. The pulses that are coming out of the heart affect every single structure of the body. They're, it's like an information wave. It tells the body what's happening. The heart reads the environment, much like a brain. You can think of the heart as a type of brain. It reads the environment and it pulses accordingly. And that environment could be the external environment or it can be the internal environment. This electromagnetic pulsation is a function of minerals like potassium, sodium, magnesium, electro, uh, calcium. We call them electrolytes and fats, especially essential fatty acids. This is what makes the omega-6s and omega-3s and your ultimate EFAs so darn important for your heart. And it could very well be that deficiencies, deficiencies in essential fatty acids, which almost everybody will have unless they're supplementing, it's almost impossible to get enough EFAs from your foods, which is why you've got to get on your ultimate EFAs or ultimate EFA pluses, plus, especially if you're dealing with heart disease. You cannot have a healthy heart function, you cannot have healthy cells in general unless you have essential fatty acids to provide, uh, to, uh, provide a, a, a electromagnetic source for the cells, for the heart cells in the case of the heart. The electromagnetic nature of the cell is dependent on the fatty membrane, especially its essential fatty acid content. Essential fatty acids are like Electric, electrical magnets, they're electron magnets. They, they carry a cloud of electrical energy. And between the, inter, between the uh, potassium and the sodium and the calcium, uh, the electrolytes and the fats in the membrane, you have uh, the interaction results in an electromagnetic pulse. As, elect, as uh, uh, electrolytes flow into a cell through the fatty membrane, interacting with the membranes, they flow through into the cell. And as they flow out, interacting with the membrane, electromagnetic voltages and pulses are created. You don't have to know all that stuff. All you got to know is about EFAs and electrolytes. And when it comes to coherence, there's also the emotional, mental aspects, and there's also the breathing aspect. To control the heartbeat, we can control our heartbeat and to control it volitionally, we use our breath and we use our emotions and our thoughts. These are our two leverage points over the heart and over the body, and they require zero medicalization, zero. And the power of these two elements, the breath slash, or, uh, the emotion slash thoughts and the breath, these two elements, the power of these two elements dwarfs anything you can get from a pharmacy. In fact, once we understand how significant and powerful coherence and electrical energy are, how important our leverage points are, breath and the emotional mental nature when it comes to cardiac health, the complete stupidity and naivete and simple mindedness of this cholesterol theory of heart disease and statinization will become. On our last program, we were talking about the power of the breath. We said if you want to experience decoherence or incoherence, all you got to do is hold your breath. You'll notice that after about 10 or 15 or 20 seconds of holding your breath, you're going to start to feel uncomfortable. You're going to get signals that tell you, you better start breathing. If you go past that point, you go another 10 seconds or so, you're going to get a dramatic signal to start breathing. And if you would keep ignoring it, you're going to find yourself freaking out. And this freak out, this kind of sensation of just something is wrong, this is what happens when people, uh, before people get panic attacks. And that's what incoherence or decoherence is all about. And it also highlights the incredible importance between the breath and health, between the breath and coherence, and there's a major relationship, not surprisingly, between the breath and the health of the heart. Not only can ineffective respiration be the cause of heart disease, it can also be the result of heart disease. It goes both ways. Shortness of breath can be caused by blockages in blood flow to the heart muscle. That's what happens when you have a heart attack. Likewise, heart failure, which affects the heart's ability to pump out blood and can also, uh, will also uh, uh, lead to shortness of breath, which then fur further increases incoherence and negatively affects heart health, leading to more shortness of breath and a vicious cycle ensues. This is the power of the breath. It's unspeakably important when it comes to the health of the body as well as the health of the heart. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Back on 
Right Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. We'll get to your calls in our next segment, as we always do on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products right at the website, or you can call the phone team. The Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Okay, so we're talking about heart coherence. We've been talking about that for a few days now. When we think of, when most of us think of heart disease, we think of coronary heart, coronary artery disease. This is the kind of heart disease that's associated with blockages and cholesterol. But really, if anything is wrong with anything in the body, it's really the same stuff. It's deterioration of tissues that follows lack of nutrition, lack of nourishment to cells, lack of oxygen to cells, and uh, accumulation of toxicity at the level of the cells. It, this kind of bodily breakdown affects the cells, which in turn causes the organs to break down or deteriorate. The idea that the heart is dependent, uh, that heart disease is a, a function of cholesterol or too much cholesterol is just utter and complete stupidity and nonsense. Just a complete non-understanding of how the body or how biochemistry works. Now when a cell has enough nutrition, when a cell has enough oxygen, when a cell is clean, it's, it's non-toxic or it has a, a, a healthy ability to detoxify itself, cells detoxify themselves. The vibrations and the rhythms and the oscillations, the movement of energy in and out of a cell will occur as it should. The net result will, will be what we call coherence. The heart is the master conductor of the energy in the body. Everything is responding, all the cells, all the tissues, all the organs and the structures respond to the energy that's coming out of the heart. That means the heart cells are key players in the coherence of the body. Heart disease is about the heart cell. Like all diseases, cell disease, heart disease is about the heart cell. We have control over the health of the organ called the heart by working with, at the cell level the same way we work at the cell level, no matter what our health challenges are. But in addition, we also have control over the organ called the heart. We can control the cellular nature of the heart like we control the cellular nature of anything else by what we eat, by how we breathe, by making sure we're keeping our, our, our blood clean, staying away from sugar, all the things we talk about here on the bright side, working with digestive health, the blood sugar health, working with the uh, stress management. But we can also control the movement or the, uh, the pulsations of the heart via our emotions and our thoughts and our breathing. Our breathing will not only affect the, the, cellular, the, the cells themselves, it will also affect the organ of the heart. These are our two major leverage points over the heart. Quickly, yes, nutrition is important. Nutritional supplementation, we're going to talk about nutritional supplements for the heart later on. Absolutely, it's important. Keeping your stress levels down are important as well. But we can modify the action of the heart almost instantaneously by our breath almost instantaneously by what we're thinking and what we're feeling. Before we went to break, we talked about how you can experiment. You can experience what it's like to affect the nature of the heart through uh, uh, holding your breath. Just holding your breath will take your heart into a decoherent state. On the other hand, slow, deep, rhythmic breathing will put your heart back into a coherent state. This is why I always say if you have fibrillations, tachycardia, your heart is beating too fast, POTS, you, ever, you, you guys, we haven't talked about POTS, but I've been getting letters about it, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, POTS is an adrenal health issue where your, where your heart races, I was talking to a gal, uh, I don't know if she's listening, I was talking to a gal a couple days ago, she's a nurse in New York, young lady, and she has this condition, her heart races, she's got all kinds of other health challenges, I say, hey, listen, you're a nurse, it's all about the breathing. Breathe slowly, deeply, rhythmically, watch what happens. So just like you can throw your heart into an incoherent state by holding your breath, you can also restore the heart back to coherence by slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. And by the way, this is why yoga can be so helpful. There's a major relationship between the breath and coherence and flow. Flow, remember, the flow state is synonymous with coherence. There's a major relationship between the breath and coherence and flow. And yoga, and this is no tree hugger, new age hippie idea. This is well defined science. There are numerous studies that talk about the health benefits associated with with yoga. I was just reading one on WebMD. 
WebMD, uh, this is a group of researchers, this is, published, this is on the WebMD website, a group of researchers analyzed over 1,400 studies, that is, a, they did a meta-study on 1,400 studies, and they found that compared to non-yoga uh, uh, practitioners, uh, compare, yoga practitioners who practice yoga on a regular basis compared to those who didn't, sustained significant improvements in cardiac risk factors. On average, the uh, yoga practitioners lost 2.5 pounds of body weight. They lowered their blood pressure by 5 millimeters. By, uh, I don't even know if that means, but they lowered their, their blood pressure. And they, if this is important to you, they lowered their uh, uh, LDL levels and increased their HDL levels. This is just yoga. According to the Cochrane Collaboration, a nonprofit organization for, of scientists and academics and health researchers, they also did a, a review of uh, yoga studies for the prevention of heart disease. They found that yoga led to improvements in blood pressure, improvements in triglycerides, improvement in physical health. Another study from Cochrane, this is from the University of Kansas, 52 patients with atrial fibrillation who enjoyed twice weekly yoga sessions for three months. Researchers found that yoga training resulted in decreased episodes of heart rhythm disturbances and reduction in depression, anxiety measures, improved quality of life, and yoga practitioners uh, also lowered their heart rates and lowered their blood pressure. There's all of these wonderful non-medical strategies that we can use for health. When was the last time your cardiologist wrote you a prescription for yoga or for deep breathing, slow, deep rhythmic breathing? or for restoring your heart back to coherence by using music. Music's another great way to, to uh, uh, restore your heart back into coherence. Coherence is, can be, actually can be thought of as a type of music. You can think of coherence in the body as a beautiful, smooth, pleasant, uh, uh, classical music, and incoherence as punk, punk rock. That's, that's a great way to look at coherence versus incoherence. Classical music versus jarring, irritating music, punk rock, grunge rock. What makes music beautiful to listen to, what makes classical music beautiful to listen to, what makes melodies beautiful to listen to is that they're actually a form of coherence. Music is about vibration and frequency, and so is the rhythm of the heart. And for that matter, the rhythm of the body. The body is making music. It's making either punk music, grunge music, or it's making beautiful classical music. Not that I have anything, not that there's anything wrong with any kind of music, but I'm just saying that grunge music, angry music, punk music is a sort of incoherence, and it puts you in a bad mood because your body entrains with those rhythms. Your body's rhythms become those rhythms. On the other hand, classical music does the exact opposite. The body itself is making music. If we had the detection, uh, the, the tools, the detection tools to be able to hear it, we would hear the body making music. You know what? The entire planet is making music. Molecules are making music. You know, molecules are vibrating too, except they're vibrating at about a billion times a second. Atoms are vibrating at a, a hundred trillion times a second. Can you imagine this? And vibrations ultimately, is, music is ultimately about vibrations. Everything is making music, including our bodies. And when we talk about coherence and flow, we're talking about beautiful music. When we talk about incoherence, we're talking about less than beautiful music. This idea of rhythm and frequency or vibration, we've been calling it oscillation. Oscillation is like a pendulum effect going back and forth. That's what health is about. It's about a rhythm that is organized and structured. Organized and structured so much that if you had the detection mechanism, you could hear it playing a song. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return on the bright side with you and your phone calls right after this. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we will get your calls here momentarily. We're on the air on the bright side, Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 at the archive page on brightsideben.com. Also on uh, benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase your longevity products from brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, and you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well, or call 866-735-2470, and they can give you all the information. Okay, so we'll continue talking about coherence and uh, the musical nature of the body, and also what you can do about it from a nutritional standpoint, nutritional supplementation standpoint, as well as uh, we'll continue talking a little bit more, not a lot, but a little bit more on the two major leverage points for putting the heart back into coherence, emotion slash thoughts, as well as breathing. We'll do that as we continue talking about cardiovascular health on the bright side. All right, from uh, CNN, 
check this out. Actually, I'll, I'll read this one here first. This is kind of interesting. I like this one. This is from uh, the Center for Brain Health at the University of Texas at Dallas from the journal Neuropsychopharmacology. Brain study connects cannabis and oxygen changes. It turns out that people who smoke pot actually have a higher, have a, a, a more oxygen in their brains. This is from, uh, from the Cognitive Neuroscience Research in Addictive Disorders at the Center for Brain Health at the University of Texas in Dallas. They found that chronic cannabis users have higher cerebral blood flow and extract more oxygen from, from brain blood flow. The non-users, the rate at which oxygen is uh, broken down in the brain was also found to be higher in users. That's very, very interesting. This may account for a lot of the psychoactive effects associated with marijuana. Now, smoking is definitely, definitely not good, and I'm not promoting it in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying that it turns out that there are things, there are elements in the marijuana plant and cannabis that can really be have some interesting benefits for the brain. And that's what, uh, that's what uh, CNN says also. Cannabidiol, which is found in marijuana plants, reduce the number of convulsive seizures in children with severe and often fatal epilepsy disorder, and that's from the New England Journal of Medicine. There is a very, very, very important connection between the active ingredients in the marijuana plant and epilepsy and seizure disorders. This is one of the most important ways to use cannabinoids. By the way, if you're interested in a good CBD, cannabinoids are non uh, ca cannabidiol, I should say, is non-psychoactive. You don't get stoned from it. You don't get high from it. But it has unbelievable medicinal properties and probably the most important or the most well-known or the most well-researched involve uh, the brain health and seizure disorders. CBD is an incredibly valuable health tool. CBD tincture is available at our brightsidehealth.com website. I don't talk about that a lot, but that's my shopping, uh, my shopping website. Products that I think are really good products but are hard to find or hard to get, I'll put on that website. It's called brightsidehealth.com. Uh, and there's all kinds of interesting, uh, interesting products on there, including our uh, Pure Health Botanicals CBD tincture. And cannabinoids can be also very effective for folks dealing with anxiety issues, also people dealing with chronic pain issues. And next to brain health benefits, the next most uh, elucidated or the, um, the next most well-researched aspect of uh, cannabinoid health benefits is around cancer, especially pet cancer. If you Google pet cancer and cannabinoids and CBD specifically, you get all kinds of interesting stuff. All right, 844 is our number. Let's go to the phones and welcome Cliff from Canada to the bright side. What's going on, Cliff? Good morning. Hey, how are you? Doing good, buddy. How about you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, yeah. I just want to, uh, like, just mention one thing about something you talk about all the time, and that's fasting, you know? Yeah. And, and I just want to mention that because uh, I was listening to you over the years, right? And okay. And in my church, people talk about fasting, right? Uh -huh. It's something nobody wants to do. And, uh, and no, even people don't want to talk about it. It's, yeah. uh, it's kind of weird. But what I did was I started fasting. Yeah. And then like once a week, and actually it changed my life. Uh, uh, so, like how it, so? It, how so, Cliff? That's great. That's an awesome story. How so? Uh, because, first of all, I got control of a lot of things in my life. Uh, I had, like, real problems with anxiety. I still do. And insomnia, because the job I do, my life, everything. I have reasons to be have these problems. How did anyhow, fasting? Uh, and, and so what happened was I noticed that when I would fast, I would relax more. That's and amazing. Started, and, and also I started losing weight. Like I've been gradually losing weight since I've been listening to you, like over for many years. And, and I, I kind of I gave up wheat products. And that was one step. Then I gave up uh, cheese eventually because you I gave up what? Like the, Cheese, like uh, no cheese. Product. Oh, that's a big problem. Food. Oh my goodness, that's a big problem. Food. Because cheese. Problems with congestion, and yeah. then finally I gave up oats. And when I gave up oats, that got rid of the brain fog. That's awesome. So, that is awesome. And, 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 congestion. So, uh, but I'm saying that fasting is so easy to do. And, yep. and, and it cuts your appetite for the rest of the week. Yep, because it does. It's hard to eat. It's hard to eat as much after you fast for a day. Do you yes, find sir. that? 
And do you find that? Do you, let me just, say, Cliff. I'm sorry. Do you find that uh, uh, the first meal or the first food that you eat, like you almost don't even want to eat it right when you're breaking your fast, right? It's like there's a little, yes, there's a kind of a barrier you got to get past. Yes, sir. And you can't. You got to be careful because sometimes you're hungry though a bit, and you don't want to eat too much, but your stomach is shrunk. Yeah, it, yeah. It, that's the thing, Cliff. All you need is a couple bites. You're satisfied yeah. after a couple bites. That's the thing. Amen. We eat. We eat not only from just fasting, just calorie restriction. I'm going to let you go, Cliff. Thank you. Did you have a question or anything? All right. Thanks for your call. Uh, thanks for your Thank call. You. I appreciate you sharing that. That's very, very important information. You know, uh, it's not just fasting. It's calorie restriction. Food is work for the body. And the question becomes, do you want to spend your precious nutritional resources digesting your food? Or do you want to spend your, di- uh, your, your nutritional resources building muscle or, or, or improving blood flow or helping regenerate blood vessels or improving heart health? That's really what it amounts to. So you don't have to fast necessarily, although that's great. Intermittent fasting is absolutely one of the most important health strategies or health tools or health techniques you could ever use. But even just calorie restriction. Even just hitting that uh, shutoff point or, or reaching or, or stopping eating when you reach that shutoff point, I should say. When you reach the shutoff point, you'll know when you reach the shutoff point because you won't be hungry anymore. But you'll also know that there's a lot of food still on the plate or you're still at the meeting or you're still at lunch or you're still at dinner. And the incentive to keep eating is there. But as far as what you need to eat, it isn't very much. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Washington and say good morning to Anthony. Hey, is this uh, Nurse Anthony? That's right. Hey, Pharmacist hey. Ben. Uh, thanks for your good work you're doing. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good morning to you in Washington. Anthony, How? what's going on? How can we help you today? Yeah, uh, I wanted to discuss with you the vitally important topic of sleep and to hear oh, yeah. your insight on healthy sleep patterns, especially within the context of someone who's supplementing with the Mighty 90. Uh, you know, I know a lot of research is going on on sleep or that has gone on in the past, which almost certainly dealt with unsupplemented human beings. You know, for example, you know, many people talk about needing seven or eight hours of sleep for optimal You don't health. need seven or eight hours of sleep. But uh, hang on, Anthony, because we've got to take a commercial break. Can you stick sure. with us? Because that's a very interesting subject. Uh, sleep, uh, two words for you when it comes to sleep. Growth hormone. When you sleep, your body makes growth hormone. This is one of the things that happens as we get older. We don't sleep as much, and we don't make as much growth hormone. Sleep is incredibly important. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. 844 is our number. We're talking to Anthony in Washington. Great subject there. Anthony, do we have you there? Anthony? Yes. Anthony, yes. great subject. Sleep. I, I, Now that I think about it, I don't talk about it anywhere near enough, and I probably should. It's really, really important. When you're asleep, you repair, you heal. It's very important for recovery. Are you a surgical nurse at all, or do you just work with surgical patients? Um, I have worked with surgical patients. I usually um, work in a progressive care setting. I deal a lot with uh, cardiac patients. Sleep is incredibly important for helping heal the heart. Absolutely vital. Here's the thing about sleep. A couple things that come to mind about sleep. As we get older, we secrete more cortisol. That has largely to do with bad living. It's not necessarily the case, but it has a lot to do with the accumulation of bad living. Uh, Cortisol will keep you from sleeping at night. And this is one of the reasons why older folks do not sleep well. They notoriously will wake up in the middle of the night. They can't go back to sleep. You could think of insomnia issues, by the way, as a classic example of incoherence. This is why breathing can help you fall asleep. Remember, breathing puts you back into coherence. Insomnia is a sign of incoherence. It's a sign that the body is not in rhythm. It's a, uh, all the different components of the body are not coherent or not producing good music, if you will. R- uh, breathing in a rhythmic, slow rhythmic pattern can put you back into coherence and it can help you fall asleep. And by the way, it's not just the, you asked about the hours of sleep and there's a lot, people say six, some people say eight, some people say nine. It's not the quantity of sleep, it's the quality of sleep. You have to have the right amount of time in, the right, in each cycle. There's various cycles when, when we're sleeping, we, we, we sleep in cycles. There's sub, little short bursts of different cycles, 70 to 100, 100 minute cycles, say. 
And so you got to have the right amount of time in each cycle. So it's the quality of sleep, not the quantity of sleep. If you wake up groggy after eight hours of sleep or nine hours of sleep, chances are you didn't get quality sleep. And this is what's missed when it comes to sleep. And you hear about how much you should sleep and uh, how important sleep is. It, what's missed is it's restful sleep. You know, if you you can you can be clenching your teeth when you're sleeping. You know, grinding your teeth when you're sleeping. People sleepwalk. You can actually have non-restful sleep. And so you may be sleep, sleeping six, eight, nine, ten hours. You wake up groggy. You didn't have restful sleep. So it's the quality of the sleep, not the quantity of the sleep. If you uh, have sleep apnea, that can be a big problem. That can be a major cardiovascular problem, by the way, sleep apnea. So in my opinion, uh, sleep, if you want to leverage the, the power of sleep, make sure that you're sleeping uh, to the point where you wake up clear-headed. If you wake up groggy, then you're not getting quality sleep. If you're not getting quality sleep, it could be, you could be doing, uh, you may want to do a little bit of exercise before you go to bed. Maybe do some magnesium or some protein before you go to bed. Certainly deep breathing, slow deep breathing can help you or anything you do to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, a hot shower or a hot bath before you go to bed. If you're lucky enough to you know, have a spouse or you know, a significant other, get a massage or foot rub before you go to bed. You know, that's, a, that's an awesome, awesome way to fall asleep and an awesome way to activate the relaxation nervous system and maxim, maximize uh, the benefits from sleep, especially the growth and repair uh, the growth and repair benefits from sleep. Especially, and also, if you're post-surgery, sleep is really, really important. In fact, the body will naturally fall asleep. In fact, the body will naturally want to sleep more when it's not healthy. Have you noticed that, Anthony? That when people aren't healthy, they'll naturally sleep more. That's the body's wisdom. The body's telling you that this is, we need to grow and repair. We need to relax the body. And, and that's one of the reasons why. That's, that's also one of the reasons why you don't feel like eating when you're sick. We don't feel like eating when we're sick. That's like a natural fast. The body's telling you to fast. And we feel like sleeping a lot. The body's telling you to relax. All right, Anthony, I want to get one more call in, okay? Anything else that you want to add? Uh Oh, beautiful. Thanks, pharmacist Ben. Appreciate it. And are you going to be down at the convention this week yes, or not? Yes, I am. Are you? Look forward to seeing you then. I yes. look forward to it. Good deal. Take care, Anthony. Bye-bye. All right. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Tennessee and say good morning to Joe. Hey, Joe. Hi. Thanks for accepting hey. my call, pharmacist sure. Ben. I have a question about saggy skin under the eyes. Okay. I'm 58 years old, and I'm really getting it bad. And I'd like to know, what are the causes? Okay. What is the Good. prevention, and Good. what can you do to prevent it? Great question. Great question. Now, are you, did you say 68 or 58? Five, eight, okay, five, eight. Okay, good. So there's two things about the bags. Do you notice that they're worse in the morning and they get better as the day goes on or as the morning goes on? The morning they're worse. In fact, my right yeah. eye is really yeah. bad. And I'm not uh, that's a sign. That's not an eye problem. That's not a skin problem. It's a circulation problem. Okay. You got blood. You got blood vessels under the eyes, and as uh, and lymphatic uh, lymphatic vessels under the eyes as well. And as things become clogged up, leakages occur, and that's what causes the bags, and that's also what causes discoloration. Is leakages out of the blood, out of the small blood vessels, and accumulation of fluid, clogs, and, and leakages. Things aren't moving as they should. It's a circulatory problem, not a skin problem, not an eye problem. And one of the one of the, my pet peeves is skincare companies or skincare experts, so, so called, who sell skin creams to take care of bags. You understand what I'm saying? The bags yeah, are I'm circulatory, and they're indicative of a problem. They're not something you want to rub a cream on. And any doctor or dermatologist who tells you to rub a cream on it, and, you know, no credible dermatologist or doctor will do that. But there's some guys on TV I see uh, marketing these kinds of things. It's baloney, and it takes your attention away from the real problem, which is circulatory, which means that you're running higher risk for all kinds of circulatory issues, including heart problems and kidney problems. So this is a major sign. You follow me, ma'am? Uh, yeah. if, you're, if this is occurring, it means fluid is not moving appropriately, lymph is starting to congest. So you want to move your body. You want to figure out if you have any digestive issues, which are, are usually the cause of blood congestion. Uh, if you're running high cortisol, you got to take care of that. In other words, all the things we talk about strategically from an internal perspective. Now, you also have connective tissue under there. And as we get older, and this just happens, connective tissue starts to break down. And uh, that includes fat. Fatty connective, fat is a version of connective tissue, and that starts to break down, and that's where you start to get this kind of thinning look. You know, under the eyes, there's, or alternatively, you can have accumulation, fat deposits under the eyes as well. Both can occur. 
So if you're dealing with that kind of issue, then again, you want to make sure you're focusing on things like vitamin C and, and uh, bone broth and, and connective tissue building supplements, high hyaluronic acid, silica, uh, uh, anything that has uh, that comes from uh, cartilage like gelatin, that kind of thing. Glucosamine, oh yeah, don't forget glucosamine, very, very important for building connective tissue, wherever that connective tissue is. Uh, and then topically, use vitamin C and retinol very carefully, in my opinion. Now, some people say don't use retinol. I say use it, but use it very carefully. And definitely use lots of vitamin C. Vitamin C you can go crazy with. Get my truth serum or my truth, uh, or our truth balm. Does that, does that make sense? There's several elements here. The circulatory element, if you're getting, if it gets better in, uh, as the day goes on, uh, and if you can kind of see coloration or purpling, that kind of thing, that's the circulatory component. And then there is the connective tissue component, everything you do to build connective tissue. And then there's the topical uh, aspect or the topical element, which is vitamin C primarily, and then to a certain extent retinol. And you know what? That's pretty much it. There isn't much else you could do from a topical perspective besides vitamin C and vitamin A for building connective tissue. Don't be deluded or don't be deceived by herbal formulas and botanical formulas and natural formulas and movie stars and, and, and doctors with, with lab coats. The vitamin C and vitamin A are pretty much it taught from a topical perspective. Okay, okay what, Joy, about just, what about, what about glucogel? What? Glucogel. glucogel. Absolutely, absolutely. Your glucogel is a key player in keeping your skin healthy. We don't talk about it as such for that reason. But remember, wrinkles and fine lines and uh, the sagginess that it happens as we get older in our skin is largely the result of a breakdown in connective tissue. A breakdown in connective tissue, okay? Glucosamine yeah. builds connective tissue. You know, most of us think about it for the joints, and it's marketed as an arthritis supplement, but your body's 30% connective tissue. That means the connective tissue in your heart benefits, the connective tissue in your blood vessels benefit, the connective tissue in your digestive tract benefits, the connective tissue in your skin benefits, the connective tissue everywhere benefits. There's glucosamine in your brain. Alzheimer's disease patients take the glucogel caps. Use all the, all the uh, uh, connect, connective tissue building strategies that we talk about for, for brain health as well as for the health of the, of the structural component of the body. Does that make sense, Joe? Yes, it does, Ben. Thank you so much. Have a one last thing. Day. One last thing before I forget. When you t build your connective tissue, make sure you use your Beyond Tangy Tangerine with your, with your other supplements because the BTT has the vitamin C, which turns on the production of connective tissue. Without vitamin C, the bone broth and the collagen and the, and the essential fats and the zinc and all of the things, that you, the glucosamine and the hyaluronic acid, all the things you're doing to build connective tissue don't work. Vitamin C is the rate-limiting step. It's the bottleneck. Without vitamin C, nothing happens. But if you take enough vitamin C, everything else can go to work and, and, you, and you do some really significant, uh, make some, some significant differences in the health of your connective tissue. All right, Joe, I got to go. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Hope we helped you out. And thank you for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Echoes of my mind.